another exciting edition of Leading Ladies TV. I am on location today, I'm very excited, <laughs> and I'd like to introduce you to two very special guests, Fee and Risha from Coffee for Craig. Hi. Hello. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, the, Fee and Risha have the most incredible story to share about making life happen. Crikey, they're such an inspiration. And as always on Leading Ladies TV, I will just ask and invite them to share your story. I think it started, I had a brother, Craig, and he, he died. He was homeless and he was on the streets. There was lots of reasons why he was, he was homeless, but he ended up in a car park and that's where he died. The last time I saw him was about a month before where we were chatting and I'd taken him out for a meal. There were, there were reasons why. I was up here in Manchester, Craig was in Cardiff and he, he'd said, oh, I want to start a family business and then, and then he died, basically. And we didn't want him to die in vain. We didn't want him to be just another person who's died and just to be like, oh, do you remember Craig? He's dead. And so it was, it was, it was, I'm, I don't believe, personally, I don't believe in God or there being a, a God-like being in charge or in control of the universe and the decisions that we make. I believe, I believe in the universe and the power of people and the power of the universe and, and like attracts like and we both come from kind of you know but and it was as if that was just a calling it it was a way for us to celebrate Craig's life although unfortunately for that to happen he had to pass but he hasn't passed in vain his life has not become Nothing. I love this. And so you were stood there and you said, um, let's buy a coffee for Craig. But it's turned out much more than that. That was the moment, hasn't it? <laughs> what happened from that moment when you decided you wanted to I think do be something? Because he was on the street, there, there's, it, there's a whole world that we don't know about. And you, you become, you kind of, you kind of blinkered and then all of a sudden it's like in Harry Potter I've said um where you go out into the into the marketplace and you suddenly see this whole world that's there that you didn't actually realize was there mm. so all of a sudden it's like a veil comes out of your eyes and you suddenly see this whole world that's there that you don't you didn't actually realize was there but it's a world that needs intervention it's a world that needs help so and it's so Craig had a family outside of his family. He had people that he helped and people that he spoke to and people that he, he, he was with day in, day out. But in order for them to celebrate his life and to say goodbye to him, they couldn't, they couldn't go to a, a normal wake. So it started, our very first project was a wake mm. for Craig, a celebration of his life. We wanted to do a meal for him. So we created the Facebook page, didn't we? On the 6th, it was three days after his passing, we decided that we were going to take direct action. And that, that was, for me, I, I'm, I'm a bit of an activist. I'm a bit of a, a direct action person. I like to... Um, our biggest question and my, my biggest kind of ethos is always and has been, can I find a reason not to do something? And if that reason isn't good enough then I will do it. And our reasoning was we wanted to celebrate Craig's street family because sometimes you sh you, your family away from your blood family is far bigger, far more important and far more needed to what you, for your needs than your blood family could ever provide for you. And we wanted to make sure that we could pay them back and say thank you. Yeah. 
say thank you and give them something as well. So we did a meal. In that was our idea, and then it turned out that Craig went to a church that did an outreach, and they wanted. So we kind of got together with them, and we provided food, and there was just a big party basically to celebrate mm. his life, and that was the very first coffee for the Craig. first coffee for Craig event. Yeah, and then we came back here and. We kind of just carried it on, really. We were, well, what could we do now? So we, we, we went out into the streets of Manchester giving people coffee and buying McDonald's and giving them sandwiches. And, and it got too expensive. Yeah, it did get very expensive. It got too Chatting expensive. to people. And <laughs> we, we, we were updating the Facebook page and saying what we'd done and people started messaging us and people started getting on board. And it just kind of just... Mm. Snowball, didn't it really? All these, all these amazing characters came out of the woodworks of Greater Manchester, <laughs> out of this ether from all over. Just all these souls came crashing into to Manchester Piccadilly, and found us, and decided that they too wanted to help. They had this calling, but they just never had it awoken in them um, and by us creating a Facebook page by us making that decision on that day three days after his funeral after his death by creating that meal after his funeral had awoken something in them and they'd seen that they'd become inspired they'd realized that their blinkers had come off mm -hmm. they could see homeless people on the streets they could see the poverty and the injustice that was surrounding them. And instead of taking to Facebook and moaning and complaining and, you know, doing all those things that so many other people do, they decided to join us, take direct action and go out there and do something positive and do something about those people that needed help. And now we're a family. It is phenomenal though, isn't it? Because <laughs> I know that you went onto the streets of Manchester next and you're buying and then you're starting to gather this family but it's only 18 months two years ago and now you, ha you how many how many people are you feeding a week oh, 500 probably plus we do three street kitchens a week on piccadilly where people come and they can get fed and they can have a drink of coffee and stuff obviously and um you have families come, you have people in poverty come, you mm. have children come, all sorts of different people come. So that's why we don't judge, we just give. Because, because you don't know what people are going through, you don't know what people need. So we just give, and then and now we've started a food bank, so people will know someone who, who may be in poverty and they can they can get in touch with us. And then we can give them a, a, a food parcel. And people are giving us things like um, Tesco's cards, gift cards, that we can either go out and buy the food that we need for the food bank, or we can just give it to a family who, mm. who's in need, and then they can do their own shopping because, you know, we will really independence. Need yeah. Independence. Yeah, independence. It's absolutely. Allowing people to create their own destiny and, and make exactly. their own choices. Yeah. And it's choice is the biggest thing. And it's gas like, and electric, we can we can people give us money in the account to be able to give people that. And so we do that, but we also we we've housed almost seventy people now. Um, we've worked with over a hundred people that have been at various stages of either food poverty, homelessness, rough sleeping. Um, we go into schools now and we do motivational speeches with kids. We pass on and raise awareness for children. We get them building cardboard box houses. We get them creating artwork. You know, some of the pictures on, on the Facebook page are, are just so inspiring. And this is only from the feedback that that we've been given. And um, we I like mean, to pass the message on Yeah, is, is the key. It's about opening your eyes to the world around you and how you can help the world around you and how you can look at your neighbour and say, do you, do you need a hand? Do you need me to do anything? Do you know what? I think you've just reminded me of my my biggest thought that goes through my mind whenever I hear somebody judge somebody. And I always, always think the only time I ever want to look down on someone is when my hand is out and I'm helping them up. Oh, that's lovely. 
You guys and that's are, coffee for Craig. Yeah, you really, really are phenomenal. Um, we've only got a couple of minutes left on this. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to just... Um, I, I, it sounds a strange question to say how have you done it because I can see it's your passion and your determination, but you've really had to learn how to run a business in a way, getting the food in, mm. um, supporting all these people. How, how have you done it? Learn by mistake. <laughs> Never be afraid to ask for help. Mm. Always, 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 if you do make a mistake, put your hands up to it and then say, how can I do it better next time? And I think as well, just do it. Just, yeah. just, just do it because you can. Because when you put your mind to it, you can do anything. And you've, once you realise that, once you believe that, then you know you can, and then it happens. Does, does that oh, make sense? It makes sense. It's I just think. so, you know, it's so empowering once one thing goes right. You just think, if that's gone right, what else is going to go right? But not, not only that, when things go wrong, it's about knowing that they will go right. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's not gone wrong. You've just learned a way not to do it. Absolutely. Nothing goes wrong. Everything goes wrong for a reason. Yeah. It's never just something that's just gone wrong. You've just learned a different way to do things. You know, you just, instead of, you go, oh, I'm not going to go down that path. I'll go down that path instead. And I just love you two. <laughs> <laughs> I just think you're absolutely fantastic. How many people, um, one part in the thing before I want to move on to just um, what the vision is next, how many people do you think you've helped? with coffee for Craig? I wouldn't like to say because I think if I underestimated it I'd be selling it short because coffee for Craig is its own being now. We've we've inspired it, we've driven it, um, we've pushed it and, and pushed it and pushed it and pushed it um, but I also wouldn't want to overthink it because we haven't thought about anything that we've done really and that's that's another big key exactly. that's scary, is really. don't overthink it because the minute you lay there thinking about what could go wrong every eventuality of what if i don't make you know we don't make money from this so it is a business eventually we would like a wage but that's not our priority right now no. right now is let's create this this organization this family you know this this new revolution of, of I think people. once you start bringing money into I think money's an illusion and I think the actual reality is the help and yeah. the people the people are the reality money you can lose money you can make money it can go here and it can go there and I know it's nice to have money but it's an illusion it's the people and the help mm. and the tangible things that you can hold on to and the feeling that it gives you and the feeling that that you know other people can have and it's it's just how can how can you how can you how can someone come to you and say help please and not try you wouldn't we say this well, a lot yeah. you wouldn't let a dog on the street you put it in the dog zone and you mm. feed it a dog we, our biggest thing is we always ask the question is there something that we can't do what what you know is there a reason why we cannot help this person? And the answer is always no. <laughs> it's fantastic. You, you're amazing. One, um, you started off in your dining room with the mm -hmm. idea of let's go and, and give out some coffee for Craig. You're now giving out, uh, feeding over 500 people a week, three times a week in Manchester City Centre. That's besides the food parcels that you're sending out and people that you find an accommodation for. It is phenomenal. Yeah. And it's come, by the sounds of it, you've just kept on going and kept on going and kept on going, never quite knowing where you're ending up. Have you got a little vision for where you'd like to take this next? Yes, we would like the ability to be able to fund um, a community building. We would like a community building that rough sleepers can access 24-7. So they're out, they're sleeping rough. They they just can't tolerate it anymore. They don't want it anymore. So they can come in, they can get a shower, they can get a bed for the night. Um, we'd like during the day for community groups to be able to come in and use that building. We'd like internet access. We'd like just a hub, a real central community hub in the middle of the city that is just an oasis of calm and welcoming, non-judgmental um, ethos as you walk through the door. And for anyone. Yeah, for anyone. 
Well, ladies, I think if anybody can make it happen, you can make it happen. <laughs> um, I invite you onto this show because I just think you're a complete inspiration Thank for you. what you've gone and done. It's, it's from the heart, everything. And I know mm. you give a lot of your time and energy to it. So congratulations on everything you've achieved. Thank and you. um, yeah, I'm sure you've inspired some people watching today. If anybody wants to check it out, um, any of it, the, it's Coffee for Craig. That's Coffee for the number four Craig. Um, but I'll put all that detail with the interview. So um, thank Enjoy. you very much. I really appreciate you for being here. Another inspiring <laughs> no um, interview with Leading Ladies TV.